Now, this is one of the most strange and interesting things I've ever come across in my research, and I haven't found a lot of the information compiled into one place, so I wanted to try to make this video to combine all of it here to show you all. So, for those of you who don't know, there's been many of these very strange elongated skulls found mainly in South America and Peru, and they're calling these ones here the Paracas skulls because that's the area of Peru they were found in. And you can just notice looking at them how strange and how large they are and how different from regular human skulls they are. Now, a lot of people that get into this will say this is from a process called cranial binding. Now, in Africa and other places, they have this practice they do where they bind the heads of small children, which you can see in this picture here. And as they grow and the, the bones harden and such, it forms this elongated shape here and that's what a lot of people will try to say these skulls are but I'll show you how that's just simply not the case for one you'll see in this picture here a regular human skull has three cranial plates and these elongated skulls only have two now this is genetic and this will not be changed no matter what you do to the skull even if you bind the skull and you do things to it to change the shape it will not change the number of suture patterns you have here. That is genetic and it's in the DNA and that will not change from anything you do to the skull. Now also here it says that some of these have been found to have 2300 to 2500 cubic centimeters of brain mass. Skull binding does not increase the cranial volume or alter the number of cranial plates or sutures indicating this is a genetic anomaly. You can bind the head here and you see the shape it makes but just look how much larger these are than that. This does not increase the volume of the brain and will not turn into this large. This is something genetic. Now, some more interesting things. In Egypt, there's an interesting pharaoh named Akhenaten, and he had some very strange features, and also his supposed wife, Nefertiti. And you can see here, they have these very long heads and even the two children on here also have very elongated weird looking skulls now this one here looks like it has some type of thing on it so some people will say oh that's showing the binding process but this one does not have it and also you can see in some of these other busts and statues you'll find there's nothing wrapped on the head and these are also way too long and, and large to be accomplished by binding like I showed you in that last picture Let's look at another one. Uh, another one of Nefertiti with a very large elongated cranium there. One more just to show you that this is not just one artifact that's been found like that that somebody could explain away as, as whatever. This is a common depiction of them with these very large skulls. Now another interesting thing is that Many old skeletons that are found in South America and other areas have red hair. And you can see on these, and there's another one here. This one here has kind of wavy red hair. This one here, long wavy red hair. Now, some people will say that over time from sitting up for thousands of years and sitting in caves and such that the hair will turn red, which it can sometimes, but it's it's not the case here. You can see that these are all wavy, wavy red. And even here, now these are pictures of mummies of ancient Egyptian royalty. And these are all wavy blonde or red hair. And even some DNA testing and uh, forensic analysis of the, the hair strands themselves have shown that they are they are red or were red wavy wavy hair that matched descriptions and matched uh, DNA of haplogroups from European Caucasians. So my hypothesis is that these ancient elongated skulls were some type of uh, royal class of unknown ancient culture that possibly survived the millennia and turned into the royal class in other areas and then spread out across the world over time. 
Now, Akhenaten and Nefertiti, one of their kids, is supposedly King Tut, probably the most famous pharaoh of all ancient Egypt. And here is a replica of his mummy. I think it's a replica. That's what this says. But you can even notice here that his head is pretty large. It's not as large as these other ones, but this would have been much later than these other skulls probably. And it's even noticeably, noticeably larger than regular human skulls. Let's see. I think that's all the pictures. Now I have a video here. Brian Forrester is probably the one who really brought this into the mainstream the most. And he's got some good videos on this. You might want to check out his channel. I'm going to play about a one minute section of one here. As you can see these really are in a museum and these are real skulls. Very strange looking. Large eye sockets. Extremely long cranium. All members of nobility. No one knows where they came from. And why they disappeared 2,000 years ago. Replaced by the Nazca culture. Who had normal skulls, not like this. No parietal suture like on that first photo I showed you. This, these weird bulges on the top of them. And then there's a link to his site here where you can get more videos and information and I think he also does tours. Now as you can see in that one picture if I didn't close it down some people are associating these with what are called the Nephilim and in the Bible there is mention in the Old Testament about these Creatures called the Nephilim, Nephilim, however you want to say it. And here is the one of the verses. Genesis 6, 1 through 8. When man began to multiply on the face of the land and daughters were born to them, the sons of God saw that the daughters of man were attractive, and they took as their wives any they chose. Then the Lord said, My spirit shall not abide in man forever, for he is flesh. His days shall be 120 years. The Nephilim... In this version, they're calling it the Nephilim. In other versions, they normally say giants here. The Nephilim, or giants, were on the earth in those days. Now, also, other versions say were in the earth in those days, but that's not too relevant here. The Nephilim were on the earth in those days, and also afterward, when the sons of God came into the daughters of man, and they bore children to them. These were the mighty men who were of old, the men of renown. So basically what I think is that there were giants on the earth long ago and that somehow some new type of human showed up on the planet, either came from off of the planet or just showed up because of major changes in the atmosphere and conditions on the planet. And these, these giants and the, uh, the descendants of those giants bred with this new type of person that showed up on the planet. And those created what they're calling the Nephilim which I think were somehow related to these elongated skull peoples. And like I said before, I think that the survivors of these and the ones who bred with 
other humans are the one who became the royal class and spread out all over the globe and you know still survive to this day somewhat although with much smaller skulls and looking more like modern humans but ones who stayed more pure are the uh, the original bloodlines and in most cases are the royal class so I hope you found this interesting and I might do another video on this expounding a little bit more later on but feel free to ask me any questions look into Brian Forrester's videos or just Google elongated skulls or paracas skulls and do some more research. All right, thank you.